are with the bearing frame uh, sub-assembly. Um, what we've got here is the shaft, the bearing frame itself, bearing frame spacer, and the SAE bracket. Various fittings that will go on with that along with the, uh, the bearing rock nut and washer. So we'll start that. Notice all these parts just came out of the solvent bath. They're all clean. The workbench has been cleaned and, and uh, wiped off. Um, very important that the bearings don't see any contamination. So you want to you remember to, to clean everything as, as adequately as possible. But we're gonna, going to assemble some pipe fittings. This particular bearing frame will be an oil bath rather than grease. Um, and it has a little, uh, a few different different uh, assembly procedures because of that. A little bit of red Loctite on these fittings. You put Teflon paste on the pipe plug itself because that's the part you're going to want to remove to, uh, to fill the cavity. Uh, the rest gets the red Loctite because we don't want those rattling apart, coming loose, or vibrating. So now Brandon's going to install the side glass. If this were an oil, uh, or if this were a grease lube bearing, this would get another pipe plug, and it'd have grease fittings front and back for the for the bearing lubrication. Because this is an oil bath, it gets this side glass, which gives you the uh, the ability to see what your oil level is. Um, you want to fill that to where uh, where oil is about halfway up that side glass, and on the top side. We are installing the vent, uh, the vent plug, so that it's got a breather capacity. So we use an end wrench on uh, installing the side side glass, um, just because they are somewhat fragile. Rattle, a rattle gun might uh, actually crack or shatter. We're going to install the pump end bearing in our bearing frame. Brandon's going to uh, install the. Uh, the bearing in the housing. The bearings into the housing are a slip fit. So these are a slip fit. Um, gently tap them into place. You only want to tap on the outside race. You don't want to tap on the body and certainly not on the frame itself. So Brandon's going to use a uh, bearing tool to drive the bearing into the body. Um, these are available from Cornell um, or they can be fabricated. Notice on this bearing tool that there's a 20,000 20, step in it. This actually helps drive the bearing into the, into the casing um, so that it's seated properly so when the shaft is installed you have enough uh, clearance for end play uh, and bearing tight uh, to get them tightened. Brando will leave that tool in place as he installs the, uh, the double bearings on the other end. Now this configuration gets double lip seal because it's oil bearing rather than grease. So these have to be configured correctly. Notice they go in back to back. So Brandon's now going to install the bracket insert ring. Notice there's a chamfer on the uh, outboard side. Uh, make it easier to install the lip seal, a little less on the inboard side. So it's going to drive that home and then install the, uh, the uh, lip seal in it. There's also a step on the outside um, so that it seats properly, makes it a little easier to drive in. For the second lip seal, again, faces are, uh, are mated uh, back to back. And the gasket, just a little bit of grease to hold that in place, a little bit of grease on the, uh, on the lip seal itself to ease in installation. Lubrication specs, both the oil, uh, assembly grease, these are called out in the uh, in the manual that comes with your pump. Brandon's now installing a grease cert. Um, that's just to uh, to grease the cavity between the two lip seals for a uh, for a little barrier fluid in there. Since there there's no grease in this, we're just going to plug this orifice. Um, that's machined in. Some some uh, some assemblies would get another grease cert there, but. 
Next comes the uh, seal for the SAE bracket. This is a double lip seal with a wiper on it. We use a little bit of solvent on this rather than a petroleum product because uh, if with oil or something it could possibly slip back out. Again, using the same seal tool to drive it home. Just want to make sure that that is flush and square with the body of the SAE bracket. Just a little bit of grease to hold the gasket in place so it doesn't slip. A little bit of grease on the face of the lip seal. Now's the fun part. We move on to the bearings. So next we're going to install the uh, drive end bearings. They're angular contact roller bearings. Um, this build gets a double bearing set up. I'd like to point out the uh, chamfer on the leading edge um, versus the reverse edge. And as we install these, Brandon will show us this will go on first onto the shaft. The second bearing will mate. The faces will mate and the other chamfer will be on the uh, on the end of the shaft. So it's important you get these directional uh, bearings installed correctly. We're going to heat these with an induction heater to make it easier. They can be pressed on, but an induction heater will make your life much easier if you, if you have access to one. And we heat these to a temperature of... 213 degrees. 213 degrees using the, uh, the wax marker. So as we're waiting for the uh, bearing to heat up on the induction heater, we're just going to double check the threads of the nut and the shaft, make sure there's no burrs, no dings, um, that somehow during the handling process something didn't get nicked. So just make your life easier before you get the bearings on. We're using an HN16 uh, nut wrench, um, just locks in pretty easily. Um, so we've heated the uh, inner race to the 213 degrees. Brandon's going to walk over and press this on by hand. Use oven rings, not uh, yeah. Gloves. And you want to hold it in place as it cools against the shaft so that it doesn't slip. So as that cools, that inner race will lock on the shaft. You won't be able to spin it by hand at least. We heated the inner race to the 213 degrees Fahrenheit, not the outer. Um, if you're heating these in an oven, you want to be careful not to overheat it. If you do overheat, you see discoloration, you could distort the bearings or the, or the uh, uh, outer body of it. Um, if that's the case, bearings are... Uh, um, are pretty cheap insurance. If you see discoloration, if they got too hot, we would suggest you discard those and start over with, uh, with new bearings. So Brandon always makes a habit of putting the bearing on the induction heater in the direction that it's actually going to fit onto the shaft so he doesn't have to set it down, double handle it. Um, makes it makes it easier for, for your work memory uh, to slide it on, only handle it once, put it on the shaft, drive it home and be done with it. We're gonna drive this onto the shaft. Slips on nicely. We're immediately going to put the uh, the lock ring on. Hold it. Just rocking that race to make sure that it's it, once it stops moving, I'll put the nut on. Yep. So we're just just gently rocking that uh, lock ring. Um, just to make sure that it's cooled, we're checking to make sure the inner race is actually uh, cooling, tightening against the shaft, and then we'll uh, drive the lock nut on. So we'll notice Brandon's pointing out that the, the uh, chamfer goes towards the bearing. And a little bit of uh, anti-seize, never seize on the shaft. These, these bearings do not have a torque spec. I'm just going to tighten it until it's all snug, tight, um, no slack. 
can drive one of the one of the tabs into the lock ring, hold it in place. So Brandon is showing us now that the bearings are actually tied against each other. You can't rotate the outer races. Um, they act in consort with each other. Our workbenches are all set up exactly the same. Um, they all have a hole cut in the top so that the shaft, uh, the bearing frame can rest on the table. The shaft can drop through without hanging up. My teeth can ding it just a smidge. Just clean it up, make sure uh, either through feel or, or uh, with a, with a rag, you can feel any hangups. Um, make sure you get those cleaned off the shaft. For the process now, we, we've set the shaft bearing assembly into the bearing frame. Um, you have two options here. As, it, as the bearing continue to cool, they'll actually settle into the bearing frame. You can give it a little, uh, little help if you need to or want to um, and press it into the frame, or you can just wait for it to cool and it'll settle in on its own. Anything that's a press fit, you want to make sure the alignment is square, that the bearings are, are flush and square to the frame. Um, if you get them started uh, a little bit crooked, it just makes your life that much harder. So we're going to give we're going to give this bearing frame a little help with the hydraulic press. Again, Brandon's made sure the bearings are square to the body. Um, and notice it just barely touched it and it dropped a good inch. Again, not much effort as it cools, it's going to seat. So now it's engaged the pump end bearing, and this is where it'll need, to, need a little more help to press it in all the way. We left the tool in place to hold the pump end bearing. We're gonna put about two to 3,000 PSI on this to drive it all the way home. And there you have it. Okay, our next step, we're going to remove the uh, the bearing press plate and install the SAE bracket. So we're just going to pop this tool off the off the frame. A little bit of assembly grease on the shaft. Make it a little easier for the lip seal to slide on. Had a bolt already started so that you didn't lose the gasket and have it spin. And he was careful to mount that so that he didn't ding the, the uh, seal faces. You never want to let it rest on that seal face through the installation process. Um, you could tear it or ding it, cause yourself grief later on. And just a quick check with the end wrench to make sure that they are good and snug. We're going to drop it back into the hole in the workbench, protect that, and install the SAE bracket. So we're going to measure the difference between the uh, the frame of the uh, uh, face of the bearing frame to the outer race of the bearing. So he's got it zeroed out. So the SAE bracket has a raised face that will fit into the bearing frame. It's important that they uh, that those match in measurements so that you don't have uh, something hold up on the bearings, uh, lock them up, or too loose. Notice too, with a, with a rubber gasket, he's going to put a little pressure on that to try to overcome that thickness, just a little to make sure that uh, that our measurements are accurate. We're going to get a good uh, a good seat there. We're going to add a couple of shims because their measurements just a little too tight. So um, we want to be at seven. Between two and seven. You want to be between two and seven thousandths difference on your measurement. We were at eighteen, so we're going to, going to account for that with these with these spacer shims. Again, just a little bit of assembly grease for the uh, lip seal. Blue Loctite on these. So now we're, uh, we're just putting a uh, frame stand on the uh, bearing frame so that uh, we can set it on the, on the table in an upright manner. 
Brandon is now just going to double check the end play on the shaft just to double check our work. So again, the end play, we want between two and seven thousandths. We ended up with uh, a little over four. Still well with intolerances. So we're just applying a little bit of grease into the cavity of, if you remember, we had the two lip seals back to back. To back. You don't want to over grease this. Just wait until you see a little show of grease through the uh, through the lip seal. We've got, got our uh, shaft sleeves going to go on next. Just feeling for any nicks, burrs, imperfections. A little bit of anti-seize on the shaft. The shaft sleeve with detent headed in. Again, you can heat these in an oven. Um, with, with shaft sleeves, they're extremely hard to heat uh, with a torch. Uh, to get adequate heat across the face. Um, and you really want to be careful to make sure you get it to the right temperature. You don't want it hanging up on the shaft as you go to install it. Okay, we've used our induction heater to heat the sleeve. Uh, we've heated these this up a little bit hotter than the 213 we did on the bearings. Um, we do that because the stainless shrinks so much faster than the bearings would. So he slides that on, make sure it's seated up against the shelf of the shaft, and we'll just let that cool. We're going to do the uh, some assembly of the vacuum pump, which means installing the uh, drive pulley and taper lock bushing. So Brandon rotated the pump, get the key uh, pointed in the up direction. So these, these pulleys are tapered, and it uses taper lock bushing to secure it, so the inner diameter is the smaller of the two. Taper, taper is coming on the outward. There's excess debris down in the crack, part of the uh, manufacturing uh, process for this taper lock bushing. We're going to make sure to clean that out. These vacuum pumps, if you're replacing one, either in the shop or the field, they are shipped full of oil, but we highly suggest you always double check the uh, the fluid uh, level in the, in the uh, cavity, in the bearing chamber. And again, a little blue Loctite. He aligns the bushing flush with the end of the shaft. During any maintenance or teardown and reassembly, you always end up in the same location with your pulley. It makes it a lot easier for the uh, reinstall. There we go. Tighten these uh, these little studs down to the manufacturer's uh, torque setting. Um, over tightened, you can drive the uh, taper lock out. Um, under tightened, it can slip on you. Now we're going to install the vacuum pump with the table, belt, and uh, drive sh uh, drive wheels. So pretty simple. Uh, clean surfaces as always. Four cap screws. Loctite. I'm just being careful to orient the, the table, pushing it back so that the uh, hole's more or less center. These are detents on the on the uh, front tooth. So here's the drive-in key. Still, uh, we'll install on the shaft. Snug fit. You never want to grind on the key. If it, if it doesn't fit snugly, you want to clean any burrs off the inside of the shaft with a flat file. Uh, very carefully clean any burrs off the, seat, off the uh, face of the key, but don't use a grinder. You'll, uh, you'll end up losing too much material and having, a, having an issue. slides right on and we're just going to use a straight edge to uh, to get them lined up and there's a small Allen set screw back it out, back it out put some Loctite on it it's 
So there are two uh, set screws. Make sure you always do the one on the key first to address the slack in the in the uh, installation. Next, we'll put the belt on. You want to do this before you tighten down the uh, vacuum pump, or else you'll you won't have the clearances that you need. Just making sure everything rotates, that it's square, the belt stays in place on the on the drive wheels. Properly aligned, you'd have a little bit of clearance of the pulley on each side of the belt. So we've started the, uh, the nuts on the bolts for the vacuum pump. Now we're going to set the tension for the drive belt and just going to slide the uh, slotted shims into place. So we've tightened up the mounting bolts. Now we're just going to check the tension on the belt. Um, should get about 90 degrees twist. Should be able to get a 90 degree twist in the belt. Again, double check rotation, make sure everything spins freely. And the last part of this, we're just going to install, install the belt guards. Okay, we've snugged up the bolts for the uh, belt guard.